Hi guys, welcome to Food Allergy Canada's Allergy Pals Monthly. My name is Julia and I'm so excited to welcome you guys to this month's session. If you weren't here the last time, here's how it works. Well, we're going to talk about a certain topic and have some fun polls, interactive activities, and a question and answer time at the end. This month's theme is a chilly one, food allergies and winter activities. So let's just go over how to participate really quickly, just in case you don't remember or you weren't here last time. So you can participate a couple of ways. So you can participate a couple of ways. So you can participate with number one, the question box. So the question box is gonna be just on your GoToMeeting screen panel. Um, and when I ask you guys a question, you guys are feel free to answer using the question box. Or if you have a question, feel free to use the question box as well to ask me the question. Another way you can participate is by raising your hand. So if you raise your hand and you have the option on your GoToMeeting panel, we will then have the ability to unmute you. Once we unmute you, you can speak with your microphones. Then everybody will be able to hear you and you can give your input or your question to everybody. So just to tell you guys a little bit more about me, I'm Julia. So my allergies, I'm allergic to peanuts, tree nuts, fish, and shellfish. I like to swim, I like to read, and I like to watch sports. Um, my favorite winter activity, I think growing up, one of my favorite winter activities was um, tubing. I really like tubing, especially since I can't ski or snowboard. Um, I used to be able to ski, but apparently that is something that you can lose. And the one winter activity I've always wanted to try, I've actually never snowboarded. And, I've, and I really want to try snowboarding because it looks really cool. And there's some really cool, famous um, athletes like Mark McMorris who are very famous snowboarders. So let's start with our first poll question. So out of the following options, what's our favorite winter activity? Skiing, snowboarding, hockey, skating, playing in the snow, or other? Skating, very, very good. I do enjoy the good skate as well. I just don't know how to stop. I don't know how to stop. I never learned how. Awesome, thanks guys. Okay, so we do have a question for you guys, and feel free to raise your hand or answer in the question box below. What type of things do we need to think about to manage our food allergies in the winter? That's an interesting question. So let's think about that for a second and either raise your hand or write your answer in the question box below. I'll read it one more time. What type of things do we need to think about to manage our food allergies in the winter? So one thing that I would have to think about managing is in the winter, there is a lot of um, food types of things that you have to do. Um, for example, like there's lots of hot chocolate that people want. There's tons of, uh, there's like Valentine's Day that happens in the winter. Um, there's uh, the whole holidays that you can have lots of treats and stuff like that. So you need to be careful and read ingredients for that. Another thing I think of is with all of these uh, winter activities, like we saw in the last slide, like skiing and snowboarding and hockey and skating, where do you put your EpiPen? That's a huge thing. Where are you gonna fit it with your bulky coat and your boots, things that you don't necessarily have the room to put your EpiPen? Where can you put it to make room for it? Awesome, thanks guys. So now we're gonna do an allergy, an allergies in winter, true or false. So I've got three statements here. I'm gonna read each statement and then after I read the statement, I want you to write in the question box whether you think it is true or false. Let's start with the first one. The medicine in an auto injector is not affected by temperature. Is that true? or false guys, write your answer in the question box below. So I think the majority of people are saying false. Okay, let's go on to number two. 
So we're gonna find out the answers right at the end. Two, it's okay to catch snowflakes on your tongue if you have food allergies. True or false? Most people are saying true for that one. Let's go on to the third one. Nutmeg, which is a common allergen in hot apple cider, is considered a tree nut in Canada. True or false? All right, let's take a look at the answers. So number one, the medicine and auto injector is not affected by temperature. So that one is false. It needs to stay within a certain range. If your auto injector gets too cold or too hot, it can definitely affect the medicine inside. So it needs to stay about room temperature, which can get kind of complicated if you're out in the sun in the summer or if you're doing all of these winter activities. Number two, it's okay to catch snowflakes on your tongue if you have food allergies. True, enjoy, they're fun, they're great. And number three, nutmeg is considered a tree nut in Canada. That is false as well. So although people can be allergic to it, it's not considered a tree nut. Kind of like a donut. Donuts are not a tree nut, but they have the word nut in their name. Nutmeg has the word nut in it, but it's not a tree nut. All right, next poll question. Out of the following Winter Olympic sports, which one would you like to try? Bobsled, luge, curling, snowboard halfpipe, or ski jump? I know what I would pick. I think I would pick curling. Ooh, ski jumps. People aren't afraid of heights here. Very cool. I think I would try curling just because it, it looks like a lot, they have a lot of fun. And it looks hard. I hear it's really hard. All right, epinephrine and temperature. So just to continue going off with temperature, extreme cold and extreme heat can affect the effectiveness of your auto injector. So a couple of tips here, never leave it in your car, in your glove box of your car. And the reason why I say this is because in your car when you're not using it, in the winter, it can get extremely cold in there. Or in the summer, it can get extremely hot in there. So it's very possible it can affect the effectiveness of your auto injector if you leave it in there. Where should you care? And my question to you guys is, Let's think of ways where we could carry it during these winter activities, like skiing, hockey, winter hiking, and skating. Let's think of some ways. Where would you carry your, your auto injector? So for me, I think it really depends on what kind of activity I'm doing. So for winter hiking and skating, I think I would have it like just in a bag across my, um, across my body, like a crossbody bag, just because those ones are a little bit lower intensity sports. And I think for like hockey and skiing, just because they're a little bit more higher intensity and like you're moving around a lot, I would try to keep it somewhere really close to me. So maybe in a pocket on the inside of my jacket, or I'll put like a really small waist thing inside my jacket, that way it stays there, somewhere where I know it's not going to move and it's not gonna fall out because especially in those sports, you might be falling a little bit more often. All right, let's talk about food allergies and Valentine's Day, because it is coming up. So on Valentine's Day, there's often treats and sweets in school, after school, with your friends, and everywhere. If you even start going to the different grocery stores and department stores right now, they're already starting to release their Valentine's Day chocolates and sweets. So my recommendation to you guys is don't eat anything you're unsure of. Bring treats from home. I always bring treats no matter what. I always have a treat in my purse. Just in case I go somewhere and everybody else is eating a treat that I can't have, I know that I have something in my bag that I'm able to have to at least like nibble on. 
there's also such thing when you go to these parties, these Valentine's Day things, some things may not have um, ingredient lists on them. If something does not have an ingredient list, do not eat it. Crafts are also a great idea. So if we see the two pictures over, over here on the right side, those are some fun Valentine's Day crafts that you can create that don't involve food. Not everything we need to do, without everything we do, what needs to revolve around food. There's still tons of other fun things that we can do. My question to you guys is, what was the best Valentine's Day party you've ever, ever attended? Why? Write your answer in the question box below. So I think for me, I think when I was growing up, the biggest thing about Valentine's Day was the parties that we had at school. Um, I think the best one that I had would be the ones that I would go and we would just simply trade uh, carts and there was really no food involved. Just because you don't need food in order to have a good time. Awesome. Thanks, guys. What my question to you guys is, so let's think of some non-food treats brainstorming session. What else could we share on Valentine's Day that isn't exactly food? So I'll give you guys an example. A cool thing that you can do is like maybe some pencils, heart-shaped pencils or pens. What other things can we do that's non-food related treats for Valentine's Day? Write your answer in the question box below. Another thing I think we could share that's non-food related is maybe some cute erasers or like so everyone can use school supplies. So I think school supplies are such a good idea or even just cards that you can get from um, shoppers or Walmart, the ones where you write people's names on it and just to let people know that you're thinking of them. I think those are some really good ideas. Thanks guys for your input. All right, so it's time to play Allergy Wheel of Fortune. So I'm slowly going to reveal some letters of a special phrase. I want you to type your guesses in the question box. The first person to guess the correct phrase wins. You guys ready? So these are the words and the genre is winter tip. So I'm going to start revealing them nice and slow, guys. So time to get your thinking caps on. Anybody get it? Getting pretty close. So we got a winner and the winner is Andrea. I'm gonna keep revealing them, but nice job, Andrea. The answer is stay warm and stay safe. Great job to everybody who got it right. Special shout out to Andrea for being first. All right, let's go to the next poll question. Will you and your family be going on a winter trip this season? Yes, no. We're not sure. What do you guys think? My parents went on a winter trip. They went to Cuba. I am not going on a winter trip. So me's a no. No. And that is okay. It is very nice to stay in camp. It's stay here too and just hang out and watch movies and just really enjoy the weather. So if you are going on a winter trip though, here are some things that you guys can do. So bring some safe food from home. Whenever I go on any type of trip, no matter where I'm going, if I'm going three hours away or if I'm going across the sea, I always bring some safe food from home, whether that be granola bars or soy butter or some chocolate and chips that I can eat. Because just in case you get into a situation where you're not sure if there's anything safe, these are some foods you can fall back on. I also always bring oatmeal. Oatmeal is so good to have. Also bring extra auto injectors. 
if you are going away and you know that you won't have auto injectors, you won't, you'll, you only have two auto injectors, maybe get one or two more. You want to be prepared just in case something happens. It's also super important to wear your medical ID. Just in case something happens and you happen to be alone, your medical ID is going to be super important to people that are there. Have your allergies translated. This is the mo this has come in handy so much for me, I can't even tell you guys. To get your allergies translated in the language of the country that you're traveling to makes it so much easier for you to communicate to these uh, to the, um, to the people what your allergens are. I've actually been thanked by workers before that do not speak English uh, for having my allergies translated on a card for them because it gave them the opportunity to really understand the severity of my allergies. And finally, research some local restaurants and cuisine. Wherever you go, there's going to be such some really cool niche places that maybe you want to try and go to. Research some local ones and see if they're going to be safe for your allergies or if they can accommodate you. The best advice is the more you feel prepared in advance, the less there is to think about when you're on your trip. You can't eat anything at this party that you're at, great. You know that you got some oatmeal in your room that you can just go and grab. You're feeling like you want a sweet, great. There's some chocolate in your room that you can just grab. Thanks, guys. All right, so let's practice a tough situation. What would you tell a substitute teacher in this situation? So the substitute teacher says, during our Valentine's Day party this afternoon, we are all going to dip different foods into the chocolate. Dig in. Oh gosh, there's some obvious issues with this one. I think one of the issues is that there's gonna that you know if everybody's dipping all these different types of food into the same bin, there can possibly be some cross contamination. So my question to you guys is: If somebody said this to you, how would you respond? Write your answer in the question box below. So if this were me and I were in this situation, something that I would say to the, to the substitute teacher is to let them know that there could be a risk of cross-contamination. Because sometimes when people don't have allergies, they don't think of things like that. And it's important for us to inform them. So for me, I would respond something like, hey, I just want to let you know that if people are, that I'm allergic to a lot of things and that's a risk of cross-contamination. Is it possible that there's something else we could do? Another way I might respond is, hey, actually I'm allergic to peanuts, nuts, fish, and shellfish. I'm not sure what kind of foods people are dipping into the chocolate, so I've decided I'm just gonna eat my own snack that I brought. So with both of my responses, I'm able to take away the risk of cross-contamination in case anybody has my allergen. Awesome, good job guys. All right, poll question. So out of the following, what is your favorite warm winter drink? Hot chocolate, hot apple cider, tea or other? For me, it has to be tea. I drink tea a lot. <laughs> Ooh, everyone's favorite is hot chocolate. Very good. I do enjoy the occasional hot chocolate. So I will say, guys, it's important to also watch out and just to be aware of the different types of food that are being served at this type of year. So for example, different seasonal products. So Valentine's edition. So there could be different chocolates with different ingredients. Never assume that because you've eaten something before that you can eat it again. Always check the ingredients to make sure. Number two, there might be boxes served with label portion or lid is removed. And maybe that lid had the ingredients on it. If you cannot see the ingredients and you're not sure if you can have it, it's best not to eat it. There can also be different labels from year to year. So for example, I know, and this is an example for around like the Halloween time, Mars, bar, Mars bars creates like their nut-free chocolates and then they're not nut-free chocolates. So that's why it's important to always read the label because you don't know. 
And many also do have the may contain warnings. So it's so important to read the ingredients to make sure it's there. All right, so it's time for question time. So just some guidelines for you guys. So no parent questions, just kids. I want you guys to either type your question or raise your hand to be muted over the phone. Keep it short and sweet, no medical advice, and one question each. So I will start off with a question that was submitted. I'm a hockey player. Where should I keep my auto injector? So my, my advice to this one is it's best if it's with you. Obviously not right on the ice when you're playing, but it's a good idea to have it in a warm bag on the bench or with your parent who is watching close by. Somewhere where if something were to happen, you can easily access it. Thank you for that question. That was a really good one. So another question that we just got uh, submitted is would insulated fabric keep your EpiPen warm in the winter? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say insulated fabric would do a good job keeping your EpiPen warmer, especially if it's on you too or close to you. Your body heat as well will also help keep it warm. So I think that's a really good idea. Thank you. So another question that I received is what do I do if somebody wants to share their Valentine's treat with me? My advice to this one, don't risk it. Same plan as always with share food. You want to be 100% sure it's safe, percent sure it's safe before, you, before you have it. So either by reading the ingredients or if there's no ingredients, just saying, hey, there's no ingredients. I'm not able to eat this. And having your own treat that you have brought from home. Thank you for asking that one. So I'm going to do one more, guys. How do I handle a classroom Valentine's Day party? So the first thing that you need to do when you find out that your class might be having a Valentine's Day party, talk to your teacher. Remind your teachers, you remind your teacher of your allergies beforehand if necessary. Have a conversation of them. What type of food is going to be there? Is it going to be a potluck? And ask what the food plan is going to be. Will the, school be, will the school be providing food or will we be providing the food? If the school's providing food, maybe you want to get your parents involved and ask them if they can help, um, if they can help somehow. Or if it's going to be a potluck, maybe, the, you, maybe it's good for you to know. That way you can bring your own food just in case there's no options for you. You always want to be prepared. And by being prepared, it's by speaking up and making sure that you have all the information you need in order to make sure that you're making the right choice for your health. Thank you for that question. Awesome job, guys. Thank you. So for more information, visit www.foodallergycanada.ca for more tips on winter and Valentine's Day with allergies. So next month's session, guys, is going to be March 31st, 2019. It's going to be from 7 to 8 p.m. And the topic's going to be raising food allergy awareness. To register, please go to www.foodallergycanada.ca slash events. You can also watch past Allergy Pal monthly webinars at foodallergycanada.ca slash webinars. I want to thank everybody for joining us today and I hope that you can make it the next time. I wanna give a special thanks to the University of Alberta for their original online mentorship program and TD Securities for their financial support. Lastly, please take a second to fill in our survey afterwards. We appreciate your feedback so much. Until next time, stay warm and stay safe.